Hi, and welcome back to Programming with Pax. In today's video, we're going to talk about CSS media queries. We'll go over why they're important, the different ways of writing them, why order matters, and also mobile first versus desktop first approach. Let's get started. So, what are media queries? Media queries play an important part in responsive design. 20 plus years ago, when everyone didn't have a cell phone, the internet was primarily viewed on desktop monitors. Because of this, websites were built with a static view where the layout didn't change. As phones and tablets have become more common, websites must also become adaptive to look great across all devices. Let's dig into some code and see how they work. All right, so here's a simple code example to show media queries. So on the HTML side, all I have is just an H1, which says hello. And in the styles, I have selected all H1s, increased the font size just to make it easier for you to be able to see, and also given it this purple color. Now, when it comes to media queries, it all starts off with a at media. And then after that, there are different media types that you can specify. So the first is a screen. This includes any desktop, tablet, or cell phone screens. Another type is print. So with print, that's when you're on the web page and you do command P and you're actually going to print out that page. So you can actually change the styles for when you're going to print something. Another one is speech. So that's for screen readers. And then finally, you have all, which will cover screen, print, and speech. After that, we're going to specify a width. So we say and, and let's do max width of 700 pixels. Within here, we can use any of our selectors and style them. So let's do an H1 with a color of coral. Now, what this says here is it's a media query for all media types and meaning both these two have to be true and a max width of 700 pixels. And the max width is basically saying apply this styling until the screen goes down to a max width of 700 pixels. So you can see here I have 719 pixels for the width currently, which is why the purple is being applied. And as soon as I grab the screen and move it down, as soon as I hit that break point of 700 pixels, then the coral color is going to be applied. Now this media query can be cleaned up a little bit because if we don't include this all for all media types, it will by default apply it to all. So I'm just going to delete it and save and you can see everything still works the same way. Now max width is not the only media feature rule that we can put here. We could also put something like orientation landscape in there. And when I save that, this is basically saying apply this style when the screen is in landscape. So if I grab the screen here and start moving it up, as soon as the height is less than the width, then it's considered to be in landscape. And so the coral is applied. I'm going to change it back to the max width. And I'm also going to add a second media query here. So again, max width, but of 400 pixels. And when I save this, you can see that we're currently at 749 pixels in width. And if I drag this down, soon it's going to go into coral. And if I keep going, as soon as it hits 400, then it's going to go into the royal blue color. So because you can chain these media queries together at different widths, you can apply different style rules to your website, depending on if you're on desktop or tablet or mobile. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is that the order here is very important. So if I take this max width of 400 pixels and I put it in between these two and save, when I shrink the screen size, the blue is never going to be applied anymore. So you can see I'm in less than 400 pixels now and it still isn't applied. So the order really matters. I'm going to change it back to where it was a second ago. So when you're dealing with max width, you want to have your largest pixel size on the top. So it goes biggest to smallest. And the way that I remember that is since it's max, then that means that the max or highest pixel size is going to be on the top. Now, something else you might see instead of max width is min width. So I'm going to change both of these to min 
And now you'll notice that we actually have the same problem as before, where this blue is being applied. And if I shrink it, then the purple is applied, but the coral is never applied. And that's because with min width, you need to stack it the other way. So the smaller pixel size will go at the top. And like before, you can remember it by, since it's min, then the smaller number will stay at the top. So now you can see that this minimum width of 700 pixels is true. And so it's applying the coral color. And as I go down, then it's gonna be the blue, and then finally the purple. So you may be asking, why is this coral color being applied at the larger screen size? And when I move down, to a smaller screen size, it's applying this purple here. And the reason is that when you use min width, you're really doing a mobile first approach, meaning the code that you write outside of media queries will be styling what your website looks like on mobile devices. And then as you add media queries, that's actually for when you increase your screen size. So max width is for desktop first and min width is for mobile first. So again, with mobile first, you'll be starting your styling defaulting to what it should look like on mobile. And as your screen gets bigger and bigger, you're adding min width media queries. If you've designed your website for desktop and now you're wanting to shrink it down and style it as your screen gets smaller and smaller, then you'll wanna use max width. Personally, I prefer writing mobile first. So that's using min widths as usually a mobile layout will be simpler. So it's just gonna be like one column. And as the screen gets larger, then you'll have media queries and add on to this. Whereas if you go desktop first, you'll have all of these rules for desktop. And then as you go down in device size, you'll have to write code that cancels it out. What I find happens is you end up writing more CSS rules than necessary in order to cancel out those desktop styles. In a simple example, it'll be about the same amount of code, but in a larger project, I find mobile first to be more efficient. And that's all there is to media queries in CSS. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, consider dropping a like and next week we are going to do a deep dive on CSS grid. I'm super excited for it. So make sure you subscribe for more content just like this. On that note, Thank you very much for your time. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.